Welcome back. Lawmakers give terminally ill patients the right to try. Last night, Congress passed a bill allowing those with deadly diseases to test experimental treatments not yet fully approved by the Food and Drug Administration. The bill now headed to President Trump's desk. Joining us right now, Dr. Mikhail Varshavsky, better known as Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike, good to see you. Good to see you. Your thoughts on this? I think it's a complex situation because we want patients to get the treatments they need, even if they're not passed uh, through the entire FDA process, because some patients are at a point in their diseases that there are no other treatments for they're them. They're terminal. They're terminal. They may not qualify for a clinical trial. Uh, they may not have the support of the FDA. But here's the tricky part. We also have to protect our patients and make sure that there aren't fly-by-night physicians, there aren't snake oil sales or pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies that are trying to benefit off taking advantage of patients who are facing terminal illnesses. Right, but doc doctors are, are already regulated, right? So, I mean, you're not going to really see, I don't think, uh, these pop-up shops of, hey, come try this out, right? I mean, I think the industry holds itself to its own standards, right? So people could lose their licenses. I mean, the whole point about this is that this is a bipartisan issue that's been endorsed from USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, to advocacy groups. So the worry isn't about that. I think the worry about is the quality of life for these terminal patients. If you're terminal, why wouldn't you want to try anything at all? Well, so here's the thing. It's important to know that the FDA already has a compassionate use agreement where I think there was 1,800 cases last year. They grant 99% of these cases already where they allow patients to use medications that aren't proven by the FDA. So that already exists and we but, definitely want patients to reach that. But this is aimed at allowing the drug maker and the patient to enter into a mutual agreement bypassing government approval. Yes. So if you are terminal and you want to try a, a, a treatment or a drug from a pharmaceutical company, you can they you can be matched with them, and you don't have to go to Uncle Sam I like it. to get a thumbs up on it. So the thing about why cutting out the FDA can be dangerous and can be tricky is because when you apply for one of these compassionate use agreements from the FDA, they often will give guidance to a doctor from their experiences with trials, which are, is a vast experience, obviously. So in terms of dosing, they'll give guidance. In terms of what to look out for, adverse effects. Plus, there's an issue of Reporting. So, for example, if this uh, bill passes and patients start using this, and let's say a lot of patients start having adverse effects, the reporting on this is going to be delayed, and it's not going to be able to impact whether or not that drug passes future FDA trials. Mm. So it, it really, it's a convoluted picture. It's not as clear-cut as giving Mike, patients these options. These people are dying. Yes, Agreed? Exactly. These people are dying. Agreed. And having experienced this firsthand, with more than one individual in my family, when you go, when they are in treatment for a terminal illness, you go to a doctor and say, "Give me anything. anything. Yes. Give me anything that is um, is in trials. Give me anything that's experimental." And they don't do it. Mm -hmm. They don't offer that. It is only through individual heft and research and working the phones like a maniac do you even find out about alternative treatments. Yeah. This is very true. My worry and the concern from a lot of doctors and some patient advocacy groups, there have been a hundred patient advocacy and research groups that actually signed uh, a letter opposing this bill, is that patients that are in this desperate situation, this desperate need, can make a bad decision, can be too desperate, and won't be guided by the FDA. But they're gears. dying, though. They're yes. dying. Yes. That's the point. And that's, yes. I totally agree with you, Tegan. Uh, could an egg a day keep the doctor away? <laughs> Are you eating eggs right now out there? A new study out of China claims just that. An 18% lower risk of death from a cardiovascular disease for daily egg eaters. Yeah, so this is an interesting study. Uh, it's done on 400,000 people, average age of 51, and it did find a lot of promise in eating a single egg a day when compared to eating no eggs a day. However, we have to take into consideration the patient population that's being studied and how they're consuming consuming these eggs. The way we traditionally eat eggs in, in the American diet is on bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. That, that's not with bacon, work. with white bread, with a lot of salt. Hey, I, I, you were judging there. <laughs> no, I'm saying that if I'm going to recommend it, we, we need to focus on what exactly we're recommending and the exact thing that and we you're expect talking about from our the patients yolk as well, to get. not just the egg whites. No, no, we're talking about the, the whole the whole, egg. The whole, the whole egg. Egg. Eat it. Dr. Mike, thank you. <laughs> thank Back in a minute.